Well, I want to be clear, this is not an endorsement, but Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg, along with anyone still supporting this indictment, is not giving the GOP much of a choice when it comes to who to support for the 2024 presidential election. This case is so obviously flawed based on what we know so far. I have never seen a case in which the statutes have to be stressed, stretched so far to, to get him. This is just very, very questionable constitutionality. And, you know, when you're going after the man who's running for president of the United States against the incumbent president, you better have a strong case. And this is about the weakest case I've seen in 60 years of law practice. You can hear how exasperated Alan Dershowitz was when he was talking to Greta Van Susteren last night. Now, as a result, there will be a lot of people rallying behind President Trump, some of them expected, some of them unexpected. And some people are already doing it unintentionally, like Nancy Pelosi. She said the quiet part out loud, inverting the core principle of the American justice system. She says President Trump has to prove his innocence. Prove innocence? Come on, ma'am. Pelosi added, hopefully the former president will peacefully respect the system which grants him that right. No, it doesn't work that way. She also says no one is above the law except maybe her when it comes to insider trading. Now, here's another example of an unexpected ally, Michael Avenetti telling Axios that even he has, quote, very mixed emotions about the indictment, adding, you can't build a case on testimony of Michael Cohen and Stormy Daniels. Now, as for Republicans, only those suffering from late stage Trump derangement syndrome will sit this one out and not support the former president. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, Trump's main rival, now says that Florida will not cooperate with Bragg's case. He tweeted, quote, Florida will not assist in an extradition request given the questionable circumstances at issue with this Soros-backed Manhattan prosecutor and his political agenda. Now, Governor, it might be too little too late there. That was the proper response two weeks ago when we first learned about all of this. DeSantis should be shutting down flights from New York airports and instituting excise taxes on all New York residents currently in Florida. That is, of course, if you wanted to outdo Alvin Bragg and produce a mirror image of something as ridiculous as his grand jury indictment out of Manhattan, again, based on what we know so far. Let's talk about this more with Congressman Byron Donalds. He joins us now, and so does Hogan Gidley. Also with us, he served as President Trump's Deputy Press Secretary. Gentlemen, great to have you here. Good Thanks to be so with much. you. Now, Congressman, first to you. Joy Behar said Democrats actually want this to happen because it's going to really kind of galvanize support for President Trump. Do you think they underestimated what this is going to do for his support? I think they severely underestimate this. I think, look, if you're going to try to game plan and, or game theory the Republican primaries, I think what this really does, it makes a game set match uh, for Donald Trump. So move this into the fall elections next year. I think they, they have already done the thing that has moved a lot of independent voters, soft Republicans, even soft Democrats, the people who are tired of the 24-7 news cycle of politics, I think that moves them into the camp of, of President Trump as well. And here's why. The country's not in a good shape. Polling has the country on a wrong, wrong track. 70% of Americans believe that. The Chinese are emboldened around the globe. Joe Biden's presidency has been a disaster. But the number one goal of the Democrats is to criminally go after Donald Trump. He's not been in office. They continue to go after Donald Trump. This is about gross unfairness and a gross streak of un-Americanism from the radical left. I think that backfires against Joe Biden and the Democrats in 2024. And I know some of your colleagues in Congress, they want to get Alvin Bragg to Capitol Hill to testify. Earlier today, he sent out this letter to Congress saying, quote, what neither Mr. Trump nor Congress may do is interfere with the ordinary course of proceedings in New York State. Secrecy is critical to protecting the privacy of the target of any criminal investigation, as well as the integrity of the independent grand jury proceedings. Integrity He's using a word like integrity, Congressman? Uh, I don't know what for, because he's done the <laughs> thing that so many other Democrat DAs and Democrat legal scholars have said you just simply just cannot do. And look, I want to be clear. Nobody's above the law. But you actually have to have something. There has to be some smoking gun, especially if you're going to go after somebody the magnitude of a former president of the United States. You know, you have to have something like, I don't know, um, a, a server, a private <laughs> server with classified information on it. That maybe a laptop with all kinds after. of incriminating evidence yeah. on it and bank records and all that type of stuff, maybe? 
Yes. All right, well, we'll Something leave that like aside that. for a second, but uh, Hogan, Bragg tweeted out that statement, and he also said, this evening we contacted Mr. Trump's attorney, this was last night, uh, to coordinate his surrender. It's been reported that they wanted President Trump in Manhattan today in handcuffs. The Secret Service had to step in, thank God. Uh, but that's what they want. They want a big spectacle. They want to see President Trump in handcuffs. They think they can use that for their campaign commercials. I think it's going to backfire on them, though. Well, first things first, another word in that statement was the word interference. Talk about your all-time yeah. election interference. That's exactly what Alvin Bragg is doing here. Of course, he's going after Donald Trump for political motivation. And regardless of any um, you know, conviction, which we don't expect will happen based on all the legal experts I've seen, um, what he is going to get out of this is exactly what he wants, which is he will be paraded around D.C., paraded around New York, heralded as the man who got Donald Trump. It won't matter that it doesn't go anywhere. Remember, it was Mueller who was the toast of the town for a while until he failed. Then it was Pelosi on impeachment one and two, both failed. Now it's Bragg. He's the flavor of the week. The problem is he's going to fail too. You keep taking shots at the king and you keep missing. It only emboldens Donald Trump, but it also makes Americans mad because you've politicized an entire branch of government. You've weaponized a three-letter agency. It's a dual system of justice. It's all politically motivated and the American people see it because it's not just Donald Trump. It's anyone who's outside of an abortion clinic protesting, they go to jail. Anyone who takes the wrong position on an issue, shows up to the wrong protest, tweets the wrong thing, supports the wrong speaker, supports the wrong comments, whatever it may be, you don't want your kid taught critical race theory, you're going to jail. Yeah. You don't want your ch kindergartner trans behind your back, you're going to jail. It's a weaponization of government. The people are terrified of it. They should be, but they should also show that righteous anger and continue to move forward supporting people who will only defend their rights and freedoms. Yeah, nonviolent offenders in solitary confinement, and if not jail, you'll be put on a FBI watch list. Former President Trump, Congressman called Bragg and his supporters thugs and radical left monsters on Truth Social, also saying, quote, the USA is now a third world nation, a nation in serious decline. So sad. Do you agree with that? Are we a third world nation? Uh, in the city of New York, it definitely appears to be that way. And we're on that trajectory. Make no, make no mistake about it. Because once you open up this Pandora's box, what's going to be the thing that either stops it or what's going to be the catalyst that blows it wide open? That's the danger here. Look, we've always had strong political opinions in the United States. And the reason why the American people writ large have had the ability to have those political freedoms uh, wide open is because there were not prosecutions because of your political beliefs. If that's where we're going, is that stop just at politics? I don't think so. No. It's going to move right. into religion. It was just talked about um, and so on and so forth. And once you do that, you don't have a rule of law. You have a nation that is divided, and all it becomes is tribalism at its best or rank authoritarianism at its worst.